Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul and happy Easter. It is a beautiful Sunday morning. I've got my star magnolia behind me in full bloom. So those open up even more during the day when the sun is out. It's just a glorious, beautiful uh, Sunday morning. So I wanted to show you the final sections of my, uh, my Bonsai Bench spring tour. I have a nice, more organized setup than in the past. Uh, I've tried to improve every single year. And this year I did a lot of terracotta upgrades and um, just really tried to have some nice organized sections. So if you missed the first videos that had sections like one through five, um, it's all good. You can go back and check them out. And today we're gonna get the final two sections. Morning, Carl. So uh, before we hit the road and get to New York City to visit Francesca for her 16th birthday party, uh, well, we're taking her out to the Seinfeld Diner at the Central Park to ex exchange gifts. So while Laura and Stella are stirring, uh, we'll get to showing you these uh, the final sections for the spring setup. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so I was mowing my lawn yesterday. It was awesome. And in the final lap in the behind the tree farm, oh, thing's frozen. Um, one of the pins popped out on my mowing deck, so there it sits. By the end of the day, I had no interest in doing that and fixing it. So anyways, it was so nice mowing the lawn again. So here we go. This section has about 70 plus Japanese maples, little seedlings between one and three years old. They are looking outstanding. They're actually ahead of my other Japanese maples um, because these came from Southwest Connecticut, which is like a whole growing zone warmer than us. And if you look at Connecticut on a map, you wouldn't think it to look at it, but we actually do have three different growing zones in Connecticut, six, 5A and 5B. So I'm in the coldest of the three. So these were already budding out when I got them. So I did my best to greenhouse tarp them at night, um, but we survived. We had some cold nights, but no issues. So over here, here, and here, or excuse me, here, here, and here. Uh, in a previous video, I pruned up these black locusts, and as you see, they are budding out. Gnarly little forest there. A little specimen. He's not budded out yet. Oh, yeah, it's just a tiny bit. And same with this one. So this guy and this guy both spent the winter out outdoors, but the forest, since it was in such a shallow pot, I, um, I took the top off of the, the bird feeder slash bonsai pot, and I brought that in the basement with the rest of them. So maybe that's why they're budding out a little ahead of the other two. Here in the middle, this awesome, awesome pot, that's my, my best pot by far, is a, an Italian fig, or a ficus carina, and that kicks off beautiful little black fruit every year. I've tried to train it as a fully cascading, but my dog Millie likes to nibble on this one for some reason. Anyways, we've got some nice healthy buds, so I expect a good growing season for that. And we have a little volunteer birch in here that I'm gonna have to get that transplanted. I'll pop that in one of the strawberry pots where I have all my other volunteer seedlings. And then on the outside here in the corner, these are Jim Dandy winterberries or some form of winterberry. One gets berries and one does not, but they have some really nice green foliage. They, they grow very strong in the year. And uh, this is actually, this came from a root, but it had such an attractive sway to it that I left it. It actually kicked up from one of the roots. And you see, nice. Nice looking gnarly trunk there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's sweet. Uh, this one not so much, but it's got a nice, nice little shape to it. Okay, so moving on, final section. We've got, this was titled my ugliest bonsai tree. 
And I pruned it up hard and got it into a nice pot, gave it some marble chips. And it's not looking so ugly anymore. If this thing survives, the verbena, I believe, then it'll be cool. Here is another Japanese maple. I lost the little name tag, or maybe it's somewhere under that moss, <laughs> but um, it is a rare variety. I haven't really gotten a prune it because it's such a slow grower in three years, but it looks like it has a ton of buds this year, so we might have to do some selective pruning on those. This is a Japanese alcova. I have a bunch of these in little mixed forest plantings over on the other side of the deck, but this one looked good and it's nice singular pot, looks strong. The moss looks strong, so I just left it. Only a few years old, look at all that ramification. Really a rewarding tree. I would start with those if I was a newbie. That would be in my top 10. Here is a London plane tree or sycamore. This was the baby of four that survived. Laura got me a handful of them bare rooted. I believe there were six and four survived. So I have not pruned them yet. Last year, I just let them grow as their first year. And this year, I potted these three together, left some nice little surface roots. And the little guy I put by itself. Here is a blueberry bonsai, getting a nice looking trunk, nice looking bark. This was very young, tender growth two years ago, and it didn't really match with this, but this was just, it was just very weak. So I wanted, I wanted to kind of add another, another trunk to the tree. So I let this thing grow in and I'm pleased that I did because they kind of complement each other. And I bet after another two years, they'll match up and this one will start getting flaky. It's already starting to at the base. Nice little canopy. It does produce blueberries. I didn't eat them last year because within two years I had treated it with some systemic granules, but now this third year I will eat the blueberries. Here is a Rose of Sharon, one of the babies from, this is one of six mama flowering trees that I have on the property. So I have lots of these babies. This one was lucky enough to make it to the pot and these things flower. This one has nice light purple flowers. It's great. Okay, so my least favorite tree. <laughs> I know in the same section, my ugliest tree and my least favorite tree. So this is a red gum tree grown from seed. And I had a bunch of lemon scented and a bunch of red gums, but one at a time, they either died from spider mites or Lord knows what. Anytime you prune them, the branch dies off. They just keep kicking off these long stringy trunks from this nub. Someone told me what it is one time and that it's very important for the health and survival of the gum tree. Mm, the leaves smell great. That's its saving grace. Anytime a branch dies, I turn it into potpourri. Uh, just, they smell amazing, eucalyptus. Uh, but I just can't, can't get these things to do anything. So the bonsai bloke suggested I just let it grow and they could be frustrating. Don't prune them when they're dormant. Give me a few tips. So for the past two years, I've just let it grow and it's turning into more of a vine than anything else. But maybe this year we'll, uh, we'll get it going as a nice looking tree. And the final one, this is a crepe myrtle. They were very popular flowering trees in North Carolina where Francesca was born, ironically enough, about 16 years ago. And this thing has a nice sway. It's a singular trunk. I showed the other day one that I treat like a bush in the landscape because kind of like this red gum, it just has one little trunk and then it kicks off shoots. Nothing that looks like a single trunk, nothing that looks strong enough for a trunk. And it's just weird because they came from the same seed pack. So, yes, sun is rising. It was a little chilly last night, but supposedly the last close to freezing night of um, the spring, which would be glorious. And yeah, got the lawn mowed. The bonsais are all set up. Glad I finally got to show you all of the different sections, y'all. 
Like I said, if you missed any of the videos, I left this lemon tree out last night because it wasn't going to freeze. And uh, it's really been helping with scale, just letting them kind of freeze off. I know I have the world's worst ADHD in the morning. <laughs> so anyways, if you missed any of the videos on these other sections, just uh, go back. They were the latest videos. And boom. So hope y'all get to spend some time with friends and family today. You have an amazing Easter wherever you are in the world. And uh, please, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do so. I'm Jared Paul from my family to yours. Cheers.